take way, no, take make waste model into a borrow use restore model and instead of thinking about exploitation of natural and human resources think about uh, restoring natural capital restoring human capital social capital as the basis of our economy so uh, the earth um, has been the brunt of all these impacts the scientists have given us um, a useful tool for looking at uh, what they call planetary boundaries and they've, uh, they've noted a few that are important climate change for example you see that climate change we're beyond the green planetary boundary the scientists say that 350 parts per million is the the boundary for the planet we're way beyond that and uh, going further global fresh water use we're still within the boundaries but that's growing ocean acidification that's growing but we're still within the boundaries but that's growing very fast um, change in land use um, stratospheric ozone depletion I think that's the one indicator that is actually going down after the Montreal uh, protocol uh, biogeochemical flow uh, phosphorus cycle uh, is rising fast and of course the nitrogen cycle is, is just way over um, chemical chemical pollution and atmospheric aerosol landing we're still waiting for the data on that and of course there's a biodiversity loss which is kind of off the chart and I'll say something about biodiversity in a bit um, so that's a kind of situation where we're in uh, at the moment we live on this planet uh, and we are putting so much stress at a variety of different levels which we need to do something about and we meaning governments consumers corporates schools etc one of the things that I'm learning as a sustainability consultant is that if you look at a uh, systems understanding of the world and I'll come to that in a bit it's not really anybody's fault because most of what we're happening uh, most of what we're seeing is largely a result of unintended consequences um, I have no idea uh, what time I'm at now actually I didn't look at my watch but somebody tell me I can't see five minutes oh dear uh, <clears throat> this is just a quick story it's a true story about unintended consequences it happened in the, the 1960s in Sarawak <clears throat> where there was a malaria outbreak WHO came in and sprayed DDT in order to kill the bugs uh, at the same time the DDT killed a parasitic wasps uh, which meant that there was a huge explosion of caterpillars <clears throat> caterpillars then at the roofs of the people living there <clears throat> the roofs fell down and WHO went into the construction industry uh, they didn't like the tin huts because uh, it was really noisy uh, and so from going to from fighting malaria to going into the construction industry they they were involved in some conflict resolution stuff they also found out that uh, lizards that at the bugs uh, were eaten by cats and the cats died which meant there was a huge explosion of rats which caused a typhoid plague plague this is a typhoid plague courtesy of the WHO so uh, from going from fighting malaria to the construction industry uh, the WHO collected healthy cats and parachuted them in and if you go to Changi Airport there is uh, uh, an inscription an RAF inscription with great British understatement saying cats safely delivered so that's just an illustration of uh, unintended consequences which comes really from uh, not understanding uh, systems this is one of my favorite uh, quotes uh, environmentalists make bad neighbors but great ancestors you know the thing about environmentalists I can say this because I am one but you know they like kind of shaking the finger is that a plastic bag bottled water you'll thank me one day you know and so sometimes a lot of environmental issues come with that flavor uh, and I say this be, uh, as an environmentalist knowing that when we tell people uh, what they shouldn't and, and can't do then that doesn't bring out uh, the best in them and the next slide if you're a corporate uh, is probably one of the most important slides 
for you to have a look at, and really it is, uh, what do you see? I'm sure you've seen this picture before. Have you seen this picture before? Yeah? Okay, so is it an old woman or a young woman or a young lady? And of course, both pictures are there. And so the question really facing corporates is, uh, do you see environmental issues as an inconvenience, getting in the way of your business, or as an opportunity? Uh, this is just a, a quick look at some of the differences between environmentalism and uh, sustainability. Environmental, uh, environmentalism often says no, creates uh, boundaries, protects a legacy of the past. Uh, controls and provides uh, regulation, whereas sustainability really looks at uh, possibilities, attempts to say yes, looks at uh, incentives, encourages incentives. Um, environmentalism is often seen uh, in conflict with the economy, it's either the environment or jobs, uh, whereas sustainability really looks to transform uh, the economy. Uh, 600 definitions of sustainability, I find none of them particularly useful and certainly none of them very inspiring. What I use is, um, is this, uh, sustainability is a mindset that fundamentally sees the world as an interconnected system, which is fundamentally different from the way we are used to thinking about the world, which is in issues or in sectors or in compartments. Um, so, as an example, if you, if you look at the title today, Save Our Planet, the question is, what do we save in the planet? Uh, it's not intuitive yet to us to understand us as part of the ecosystem, part of the planet. So when we say, for example, when we say no to shark's fin soup, we do so in an understanding of the place, uh, the, the web of life, of the stuff that uh, sharks uh, do in the oceans uh, and our link to them uh, within the ecosystem. So once you see the world as a system, you begin to understand uh, unintended consequences. And now we get to the corporate bit, uh, and I'm, I'm really going fast here. So this is hot off the press. This is uh, from McKinsey, uh, August, uh, oh, this month which says that the next environmental issue for business is um, biodiversity, and we'll be hearing more and more about biodiversity. What is interesting about this survey by McKinsey is that 59%, uh, nearly 60% of the corporates that were interviewed began to say that they saw this environmental issue as an opportunity. Compared to the 2007 survey when it was about climate change, when uh, less than 30% of corporates saw this as, uh, a, a, as an opportunity. And so there's, a, there, there's been a shift in the corporate sector to see uh, this more holistically. Uh, this is uh, an article in the Harvard Business Review, whoops, uh, that says, uh, it, it remarks that business history is punctuated by fundamental shifts in the competitive landmark, uh, landscape that create inescapable threats and game-changing opportunities. And what they say is uh, sustainability is an emerging business megatrend, like electrification, mass production, the quality movement, that's TQM, and the introduction of IT into business processes that will profoundly affect companies' competitiveness and even their survival. And of course, the reason is that there are now a lot of companies, well, not a huge amount, it's still a small percentage, but there are a lot of companies who have been in the sustainability game a long time. I'm just going to give you, and we could have used um, uh, any number of examples, I'm just going to give you one. Uh, this is Ray Anderson. He started a company uh, that sold uh, uh, carpet in the United States. It was a billion dollar company until he found uh, sustainability. That's his latest book in which he, write, in which he wrote, um, when we used to hear the word environment, we thought costs. But the trade-offs we are told we must make between financial success and environmental success are just plain false. From 1996 through to 2008, 1996 was when they started on the sustainability trend, my business has cut its net greenhouse gas emissions by 71% in absolute tons. 
Now, I just put that into context with the, the Kyoto Protocol, 